Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to talk about multipass as one of the easiest ways to get started using Ubuntu. And the great thing about multipass is really twofold. One, it comes from Canonical, the people who make Ubuntu, and two, multipass runs on basically any Linux, Mac OS, or Windows system and it's pretty universal across as far as the commands you use to use it. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we are on the Multipass website, multipass.run. We are going to go to install now, and we're gonna select Windows, and it gives you some information about this. Now there is, I believe, another way you can do this. If we run a Windows terminal, we could say winget search multipass. And we can, in fact, install this right through winget. But for the sake of argument, since a lot of my viewers are not using winget, quite yet, although I urge you to try it, we can do it the old-fashioned way. Download Multipass for Windows, and it's going to download an executable file. And, and really, people, after using Winget, this seems like an archaic way to do things. <laughs> so I, I really urge you to try Winget. All right, so we can open the installer and say yes. We'll go ahead and minimize our other windows. We're going to say next. It gives you a bunch of information and licensing agreement. We're going to agree. And on Windows, you get your choice of two hypervisors. You can either use Hyper-V, which is the recommended version, or, or your recommended option, rather, or you can use Oracle VM VirtualBox. We're going to use Hyper-V in this instance, and we're going to just say Next. Add multipath to the current user's path recommended. Yes, we do want that. And it gives you the destination folder, which is fine. And Install. Okay, so this wants us to reboot, and so I will be right back. And down here, we've actually got multipass running in the system tray. If we right click on it, we can find out a little bit about it. Version 1.11.1 .1, Windows. It's gonna auto start on login. And obviously you can turn that off from here. If we come to Windows Terminal, we've also got some commands that we can play with. We do multipass by itself. It's going to give us a list of commands. So we might want to see what aliases are available. and currently none are defined. Multipass, find. We'll list the available images that we can download. And to launch with the default parameters, a VM in multipass. We would say multipass launch LTS. You can also use Jammy as the the name here. And the randomized name that it's giving us is striking borer. 
So, kind of interesting. <laughs> All right, we're getting closer, waiting for initialization to complete. All right, skipping mount due to disabled mounts feature. We'll address that later. If we say multi-pass list, it will show us the running VM. Now, if we do multi pass shell striking hyphen borer, we are in that VM and we can enter uh, uname a, and you can see that it is, in fact, running a Linux 5.15 kernel and we are all good. Now, from here you can do all the things that we've covered in our Linux command series. Um, you can run top, uh, you can run htop, and this actually gives you a an idea of what kind of parameters that have been set by default by multipass. So uh, basically it's one CPU and one gig of RAM. And of course there are ways you can change that, but that is out of the scope of this intro video. We'll look at that in a future video. But the reason I wanted to cover multi-pass or revisit multi-pass, uh, which I initially looked at when it first hit 1.0, uh, is that this is a quick, easy, and free way for people using other Linux distributions or Mac OS or Windows to be able to set up a Linux environment quickly. And for example, in the upcoming Linux class that I've been working on, setting up in multi-pass would allow me to give a set of commands to create the VM and have those be uniform across all the platforms. So this does pose an advantage provided we decide to use Ubuntu in the course. That's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're not quite ready to reveal all the details of the upcoming course. So just wanted to run through this. And there are, of course, other things you can do here. We can log out of that and then if, of course if we do multi-pass list it's going to show the running and the stopped vm if we do multi-pass delete it should delete that stopped VM and it is showing as deleted and then multi pass purge should get rid of that completely. So now we've just got our one multi pass VM running. So, of course, we could stop our VM and we can delete this one as well. And if we purge that, when we do multi-pass list, it's gone, gone, gone. All right, so uh, this just scratches the surface of what you can do with multi-pass. I will be doing a video on this, uh, hopefully later this week, 
but definitely before the end of March. And we will take a look at some of the other parameters that we can use with multi-pass and how we might mount a local directory into the VM so that we can keep copies of our files even if we delete and purge the VM in between uses. And that, my friends, will bring us to the end of this video, taking a look again at multi-pass. Few things have changed since we last looked at it, but for the most part, it has remained a pretty consistent platform. Again, one of the nice things about multi-pass is that you've got the option of using VirtualBox as the backend or using the native virtualization for the platform. For example, on Windows, it would be Hyper-V. On Mac OS, I believe it's called Virtual Kit, but don't hold me to that. And then on Linux, of course, you could use KVM. So hopefully this will inspire you to take a little bit of a look at multi-pass. And who knows, you may end up seeing a little bit more of this going forward. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.